Hello everyone, I'm Owen, and today we're taking a look at Splatoon 2. For those who don't know, Splatoon is a game where you play as squids and shoot ink at each other as a sport. The game is generally fast-paced, with rounds lasting either 3 minutes or up to 5 minutes, not counting overtime. Each player has an arsenal of weapons to choose from that are all paint-slash-ink themed that include primary firing, with secondary bombs, and a special ability. The game is played as a 4 vs 4 players with different objectives and maps depending on the time of day and game mode. There are five different game modes. The first is Turf War, where your goal is to paint more of the map than the opposing team. These games are always three minutes long. This is the core game mode as most maps were originally designed for this mode. There's also Splat Zones, where you have to keep a zone painted for your own color for 100 seconds. Clam Blitz, which is a fancy basketball game and Rainmaker, which is a reverse capture the flag. Lastly, the one we'll focus on today is Tower Control, where your objective is to ride a tower all the way through four checkpoints into the enemy's base. All the maps in Splatoon 2 are symmetrical. All but one have rotational symmetry, so it looks the same no matter what side you're on. This is a good thing considering none of the game modes are an offense versus defense. All the game modes are intended to be a fair fight no matter what side you're on, and the symmetry supports this. The specific map we'll take a look at today is called Muscle Forge Fitness. The maps are slightly modified per game mode to encourage movement in specific directions, but we'll get to that later. On this map, the path to the tower squiggles through the terrain and slowly makes its way to the goal. To start, Splatoon generally has a free range of motion since you can climb over any inkable wall. But in this case, each base is risen so you can walk off the ledge until you get to the No Squids Land in the center of the map. As you move into the enemy base, you're forced into two general paths. The first is to go straight through the middle, and the second is to go up onto this ramp. The second path, in this case, follows the tower while the first one lets you behind the final objective to provide support. I want to point out the importance of the grates in these key locations as well. In Splatoon, the best way to heal, regain ink slash ammo, and to move is to submerge yourself inside of your own color ink. That makes areas where you can't ink very dangerous. On top of this, while you are in squid form, you can fall through grates. This makes these grates extra dangerous. But as you can see, by putting grates at these choke points, that gives the defending team the advantage. I also want to point out how after the tower leaves the most center raised area, it goes down into a passage between two different raised areas. This gives the defending team an advantage over those riding the actual tower. And once you reach this corner, the defending team has the perfect opportunity to launch a counterattack while the tower waits at the checkpoint. For the game modes that are not Turf War, the goal of the developers seems to keep the game as balanced as possible so it runs to the end of the timer. As you can see, the further you get from the center of the map, the more in favor the game is for the defending team. The result of this choice is a much more fun experience when playing. Having the game end in less than a minute is never fun for the losing team, so having the game ping-pong back and forth is a much better option. I also want to point out the plenty of raised areas positioned all around the map. These areas are used both as cover from fire as well as areas for snipers to perch themselves. There are a lot of ink explosions in this game, but hiding around a corner will keep you from taking any damage. This feature is actually used when designing the tower and tower control. The black obelisk on the tower can be used as cover. If an ink bomb went off on the other side of it, the player could survive if they were behind the pillar. A few things I want to note is the verticality of the map. The spawn area is raised up so it can't be accessed by the enemy team, ever. This is done to prevent spawn camming, to give the defending team an advantage, and multiple ways out of their spawn area. Your own base is generally two tiers. Spawn is the first tier, with the rest of the base being the second tier. As mentioned before, the enemy has two main ways into your base. It's slightly different per game mode, since not all game modes encourage the offense to enter the enemy's base. I also want to point out the fact that you can see most of the activity in the game from your spawn point. A lot of the maps have this feature and it allows the player to get a good sense of what's happening while they spawn, without having to open up the map. Overall, the map encourages a well-balanced competitive environment. It gets more hectic for both teams the closer you are to winning. That's due to the advantages the defense gets from the terrain. In general, it's easy to understand what's going on for a game mode like Tower Control, considering that there's a big flashing light coming from the tower, and the fact that it makes a fun noise when you're on it. This map in particular does a good job of guiding the player to the tower and keeping them engaged environmentally. In the end, this is one of my favorite maps for tower control, because of all the features I mentioned before. 
the checkpoints, using grates, the defense always having an upper hand, and multiple entrances to the base, and the fun music from the tower. Unfortunately, Splatoon rotates which maps and game modes are available every two hours, but this also forces the players to keep their abilities sharp, so I don't mind. Anywho, give Splatoon 2 a try! You can find more of me by checking the links in the description. Ta-ta for now.